Welcome to Physics with Han. Today we're going to be looking at progressive waves. Now, you would have looked at progressive waves at GCSE and you might have drawn them like so on axes and just the waveform drawn across the top like so. Um, but what are progressive waves? You need to know that this definition. Progressive waves transfer energy or information, but they do not transfer matter. It's very important to remember. Um, as an example, if you think about a buoy floating on the surface of the water, when the water waves pass the buoy, the buoy will move up and down. However, the buoy will not be transported into the shoreline. It will not move in the direction of the wave travel. This is an example of a transverse wave. Okay, you can draw transverse waves like so. And a property of transverse waves is that they oscillate at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer or propagation of the wave. Um, examples of transverse waves are electromagnetic waves, like we just said, water waves, um, or you could also look at waves on a slinky um, going at 90 degrees. Right, longitudinal waves, again, you can model these on a slinky, but moving the slinky um, backwards and forwards. Um, longitudinal waves have regions of compression and regions of refaction. Their oscillations are parallel to the direction of the energy transfer or the propagation of the wave. Right, so you need to be able to label a wave, okay? You need to be able to label the wavelength, given the symbol lambda, the amplitude, which is from um, the line of zero displacement up to a crest. It could be also down to a trough as well. And obviously the crest and the trough. Okay, you also need to know the definitions. So starting with displacement, symbol X measured in meters. This is how far a point on the wave has moved from the undisturbed position. Important, it's how far a point on the wave has moved, not the wave itself, okay? Amplitude is the maximum displacement from the undisturbed position. Another way of saying that is from the equilibrium position as well. Wavelength symbol lambda, again measured in meters. This is the length of one whole wave cycle. Period, or really the time period, symbol capital T, not lowercase. This is the time taken for one whole wave cycle, measured in seconds. Frequency, unit hertz. This is the number of wave cycles per second. An equation that you will need to be able to use and one that is given on your data sheets is frequency is one over time period. This is an example using the equation. In this example, you're given more information than you actually need in order to find the time period of a wave because the only information you need is the frequency. But I've labeled it anyway. We're given the amplitude 3.8 centimeters, frequency 5.12 hertz, now, we've been given the distance from a crest to the neighbouring trough, 12.8 centimetres. It's important to note that this is not the wavelength. You'd have to times that by two in order to get the full wavelength of the wave. But for this example, we just need to use frequency as one over time period. So rearrange that. Time period is one over frequency. So putting the numbers in, one over 51.2. Put that into your calculator, you should get 0 0.0195 seconds